Hey everybody, HMV here. Playing more Kerbal Space Program, and we are launching the Nitrogen Station 1 into orbit, and I've got a lot to talk about. So in 3, 2, 1, let's launch. First of all, this is called the Nitrogen and not the Carbon Station, um, for no reason other than the fact that I built the um, ship that's going to dock with this thing first. <laughs> and uh, so I named it the Carbon Ship, and then this is the Nitrogen Station. So that's just the way it works. Um, second of all, um, this is my first foray into the new fuel flow rules in, in earnest, at least. Um, and as soon as these SRBs finish and we kick off the main engines here, we're going to see... Um, some of the some of the results, not really of the of the new fuel rules, but um, of using the old parts, the old the old way to do it instead of the new fuel rules. Um, here we go. The new fuel uh, system uh, with the pumps and everything, it is pretty awesome. But it is not a panacea. It does not fix every problem with uh, fuel flow fuel flow that we will ever have. Um, in particular, uh, I. I set up, I turned these decouplers to, um, I set these decouplers up to pump fuel between all the tanks and then uh, set these tanks up to have uh, higher values or sorry, lower values than these or higher, I don't remember, so that they would pump into these. And sure enough, these tanks emptied first, which was perfect. They did exactly what I wanted them to. However, when they finished pumping, these engines kept going. That's a crazy thing there by the way that the way that works is crazy these engines kept going even though there was no fuel in these tanks because they were able to the the cross feed here on these is no longer unidirectional it's bi-directional so these engines were able to keep going so what i had to do is i had to turn off cross feeding on these things and then turn and then add the old uh fuel pumps the the lines so those lines are still useful and you'll see here when these tanks run out which i've got them pumping backwards to to keep the there you go when those tanks ran out it worked it, it they stopped running which is exactly what i wanted to happen and while i'm talking here i should probably make sure oh yeah we're doing fine i actually should probably tilt over all the way get this guy into orbit but yeah the the within a stack though i set up the fuel pump so that this guy stays full um you notice his stack his flow priority is negative one whereas this guy's flow priority is zero so um the lower fuel priority is actually going before the uh the other one so um that allows you to do a lot of stuff that uh, good speed fuel pumps used to do. And uh, I'm going to try our GPS speed fuel pumps. So I'm actually going to try to um, use that instead from now on, uh, just to see what happens. Um, we've got a pretty good periapsis here, apoapsis, I'm sorry, and we're just burning up. Um, I'm going to put this guy at around 110. Um, I generally don't like to put things up that high, but, uh, you know, but with the 100 kilometer boundary between the way orbits work and the fact that orbits are still a little wonky as much as uh as much as they've worked they put into it making them pretty good um you still get some degradation low so in order to not have those problems i'm just going to avoid them altogether by getting my orbit up full um i could ditch the fairings now and you know what might as well let's get rid of them and look at the station it's pretty simple obviously there's nobody on it um there is uh just a probe core, some solar panels. It's a very rudimentary station. It does have a decent amount of fuel. It's got enough fuel for two uh, T-800s to fill up from it. Oops, 113. That works for me. Kind of wanted 110, but you know what? 113 will be fine. Now, this guy has does have solar panels, and he does have reaction wheels, but he doesn't have very good of either. So um, we're going to do this, and... Uh, when we get up to when we get our periapsis up to about uh, 50 or so, I'm gonna ditch the the back fuel tank here, even though it is still gonna have fuel in it. And I could have done something tricky like add drogue shoots and regular shoots to it to try to bring it down, but I really don't think that's necessary. We're doing fine on money. I think I think my time is better spent completing contracts than it is. Uh, Trying to save money on launch costs. Okay, gonna hit the gas. Let's watch our periapsis here when it gets up to. There we go. Now we're gonna ditch this guy. And we're gonna burn up the rest of the way. Losing a little bit of fuel. 
dumping it back into the ocean or perhaps on another continent somewhere, but who cares about that? Okay, 113 by 108. 113 by 112, that's perfect. Okay, Kerbo National Space Station is in orbit. We are going to aim him north. So he always gets a solar panel in the sun as long as he's... Uh, so long as he is actually in the sun and <laughs> not in the shade. Um, he's got a very full fuel tank. Um, let's go ahead and ride this down at least to the point where it'll d delete itself. I could have put a probe core on this guy and burned him backwards too, but uh, not going to bother with that. And considering it's in the dark and we don't have um, we don't have ambient light adjustment, I'm going to let you go here, and I will be back when we are launching the Carbon One. And this one takes a little bit of work. I need to turn on SAS. I need to hit the space bar, and when we get up to 500 meters, I need to lock prograde, and then from there he, he just gets into orbit. <laughs> So, uh, 500, there we go. Lock prograde and just watch it go. And obviously I have to hit the space bar when appropriate, which is now. Okay, we just lost our uh, fins. And we are a lawn dart here. Note our periapsis is, oh wow, it's actually really close, or our apoapsis, I'm sorry, is really close to where... The space station is. I didn't even plan on that. Um, I, I knew that, that this could get it up to about 110, which is why I kind of set the vessel to be on 110. But we can do this too. So let's go ahead and get him up. He is in front of the space station, the nitrogen station, uh, which I'm going to have to re reassign as a station. So we want him to go a little slower. So let's burn him up to like that. I think that works for me. Uh, we're at 60, so let's go ahead and ditch the fairings. Let's actually cut our engine because we don't want it to go anymore. Let's ditch the fairings, which I'm positive I set to clamshell, um, but we'll deal with that later. And uh, let's go ahead and ditch this thing. Using that stack separator that is... Uh, still doesn't make any sense that that's the part that it is, but hey, what are you going to do? And let's go ahead and... It says it's a 10-day burn. Obviously, that's wrong. Let's go ahead and do a quick test fire here. It's a minute and three seconds, 53 seconds. So when we get down to about 50 seconds or so, I'm going to hit the gas. At some point, I stopped recording. Um, just so you see here, <laughs> uh, where nothing really has happened yet. Jeb in the carbon ship is right here. He um, is coming around, and next orbit, he's going to get within... Um, I think it's 200 meters of the space station. Um, and I jumped back to the space center here to check and see if we got any contracts while we were doing all these launches and things. And then I looked up and I noticed I wasn't recording. So sorry about that. Um, we're not going to do the satellite. We're not going to rescue Barbasol, Kerbin, and we are not going to ferry tourists to their destination because they want to go to the moon. And we haven't even landed on the moon. We're not going to fly tourists to the moon, that's for sure. So let's head back up to Jeb and uh, take care of the rest of this mission, hopefully with the uh, camera rolling. I do love seeing these lines. Um, I've thought about uh, knocking the atmospheric uh, occlusion down to about 10% because I think 25% is just too much. I think there's there's way too much um, cutting through the atmosphere, uh, cutting through the planet to, to get that going. Um, it, just, it just seems wrong to me. I'm sorry. But where's the space station? There it is. It's coming at us. I like the new box around the around the space station. That, that makes it a lot easier to find it. It's seven kilometers away. It looks like we're coming at it a little bit. Maybe go this way, just a just a smidge. Maybe a little more than a smidge. There we go. The wrong, totally the wrong way. So let's go ahead and do this. There we go. Now we're coming right at it. Now I'm going to watch it on the nav ball and see what it does. It's wandering off that way. So if we burn like this, that'll bring it back, right? I think. Oh, whoa. That's what you get for watching the nav ball and not your target. Luckily, I didn't crash into it. <laughs> This is why we train on how to do these things and don't just assume we're going to get them. Okay. 
Jeb, a retrograde, actually. Why are we using that instead of that? Okay, here we come. Oh, look at that. How perfect is that? Okay, Jeb, do your thing. Now, we haven't invented RCS yet. We also haven't invented right-clicking. Let's control from here. Let's not set this docking port as a target. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, we can. We should be able to do this trick here. Right click the docking port, go back to Jeb, and then set as target. And now that's our target. Okay, we want to be north of the station, which is this way. And kind of aimed at the station. I guess we want to, yeah, we want to aim this way because the station's here. We want to aim north of it. So we're going to just give it a couple meter couple decimeters per second here not in any hurry at all our very first docking ever no rcs no no computerized systems no nothing just jeb and his awesome abilities there's another thing i wanted to try i don't know if it's going to be good or if it's not going to work or whatever but i can uh, i can center the camera on this thing at least i think i can There we go. I wish I could aim at target, but I guess when we start heading towards it, let's let's try this here. Yeah, see, I can't put the camera on this thing. For some reason, I can't right-click it when I'm over here. That seems like that's a bug. But, oh well. Um, you know what? I'm going to drop a quick save here. F5. Okay, let's do Alt F5. Uh, because I should be able to do that, and I can't, and I'm going to report that as a bug. Okay, Jeb. Let's just head at this docking port. We are kind of cockeyed. Not a big deal. I'm just going to come down here, bonk into it. Turn on fine controls. And... Bam! We just got two contracts. We got... It's like a vessel handshake with minimal shaking and no hands. 1200 bucks. And then we got the World Force Milestone. We have started constructing the first station around Kerbin, and we have performed a docking maneuver. And we have completed the Build a New Orbital Station contract. And ideally, we now have... Did we get this other one here? Maintain stability for 10 seconds. Yeah, that's the one we just got. We just got this one. Um, what's left for Jeb to do here? Uh, test the stack decoupler. That's not going to happen. Transmit from the moon. That's not going to happen. Plant a flag on the moon. Not going to happen. Explore Kerbin. We have docked two vessels. Oh, we need to transfer crew. That's right. Jeb, why don't you... Uh, I guess this isn't an option anymore? Oh, wait. Crew hatch is still a tiny, tiny little thing. Come on, where is it? There we go. Transfer Jeb to here. Bam! We have explored Kerbin. Nice. Forty-eight hundred bucks, thirteen hundred bucks, twelve hundred bucks. We have so much money. Okay, let's head back to the space center now. We should definitely have more contracts. Ah, oh, wow! Two tourists. Are you the guys who want to go to Moon? No. Let's see. Satellite rescue. Another satellite and another satellite. Yeah, I mean, we could do another satellite three-way, but I honestly, I just don't want to. I want to do other things, um, like go to the moon. So I think we're we're next time we're gonna we're gonna plant a flag on the moon, and it's probably gonna be Val. And I might actually leave Jeff up there. There's really no reason to bring him home at the moment. Um, and he could get a we could get a, a, a data from from space around Kerbin, and he can grab that and then come home with it or something like that. So I think we're going to leave us here. Let's head back out into orbit, though, and look at the beauteous thing we have created. Um, we, yeah, we also need to... Uh, can we do this here? There is a way to do this. I just don't remember what it is. We click on the information and then click on this. Right-click on this. Vessel classification. It's a ship. Yeah, you can't do this anymore. For some reason, they took this away. And I remember hearing why, but I don't know what it is. Um, the Boron 1 satellite and the Nitrogen Station. So let's go ahead and get to the Nitrogen Station. Let's actually right-click this and rename. 
Nitrogen Station 1 is a station. It's a very little station. It's very rudimentary. We could also... Uh, we can't pump fuel. Why can't we pump fuel? Do I not have that unlocked? Let me head back to the Space Center really quick. What do you need to be able to pump fuel? Um, unlimited parts. Okay, so it's not that. Wait. Uh, oh, is it research? Oh, I bet it's R&D. Resource transfer available. 451. Well, you know what? We need to do it anyway because we're getting to the point where we don't have any more nodes to unlock. So, bam, that's a big expense right there. But we've earned it. Now let's head back to uh, Jeb. Now we can transfer from here to here. Is that, gonna, that is going to leave him some fuel. So I think that's probably enough fuel for him to get back home when he so decides to. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. I definitely enjoyed playing. I'm HMV and I will, as always, talk at you later.